After ejaculation, an intricate and carefully timed process begins inside the human body, guiding millions of sperm on a journey that is far more challenging than most people imagine. Even though ejaculation may seem like a quick event from the outside, the biological cascade that follows is a coordinated sequence designed to give the best possible chance for a single sperm to reach and fertilize an egg. It begins the moment semen enters the vagina. Semen is a thick, milky fluid that carries sperm and helps protect them as they transition from the male body to the female reproductive tract. Within seconds, the environment around the sperm begins to change. The vagina is naturally acidic, which protects against infections but can be harmful to sperm. Semen contains substances that temporarily make this environment less acidic, allowing more sperm to survive the first stage of their journey. Despite this protection, a large portion of sperm will not make it past the vaginal entrance. This early loss is normal and part of the natural selection that happens throughout the process. Soon after entering the vagina, sperm begin moving toward the cervix, the narrow opening that connects the vagina to the uterus. The cervix is usually closed by a thick mucus barrier, but during the fertile window, this mucus becomes thinner and more slippery. This change is influenced by rising estrogen levels in the female body, the thinner mucus not only protects the sperm, but also forms tiny channels that guide them forward. Sperm use their tails to swim through these channels, and although they appear to move quickly under a microscope, their actual progress is slow and energy intensive. Many sperm get trapped in the mucus or lose their ability to swim, and only a fraction enter the cervix successfully. Once inside the cervix, the journey becomes slightly easier for a while. The cervical canal provides a more stable environment, and sperm that enter it are somewhat shielded from the acidity of the vagina. However, they still need to navigate through the mucus, which continues to act as both a filter and a support system. Abnormal or weak sperm often get stuck or are unable to move efficiently, leaving the healthier and more mobile sperm to advance. This stage also serves as a resting point where sperm can pause and conserve energy for the next part of the journey. Some sperm can remain in the cervical canal for several days, which is why fertilization can occur even if intercourse happened days before ovulation. After passing through the cervix, sperm move into the uterus. The uterus is a muscular organ, and its gentle rhythmic contractions help propel sperm upward. These contractions are not random. They are influenced by hormones released during arousal and ovulation. They act almost like waves, pushing sperm closer to their destination. At this point, many sperm still do not survive. Some are attacked by immune cells that mistake them for foreign invaders, while others simply run out of energy. The female immune system naturally reacts to sperm because they carry genetic material that is different from the female's own cells. However, during the fertile window, the immune response is slightly less aggressive, allowing more sperm to continue. Still, the uterus remains a major point where numbers drop sharply. As the sperm exit the uterus, they face a critical fork in the road. The uterus leads to two fallopian tubes, but usually only one tube contains the recently released egg. Sperm cannot sense which tube is correct in a conscious way, but subtle chemical signals produced by the ovary and the egg help guide them. Even with this chemical guidance, only a small group of sperm, sometimes just a few hundred from the original hundreds of millions, make it into each fallopian tube. The fallopian tubes are narrow and lined with tiny hair, like structures called cilia, which brush gently in the direction of the uterus. Interestingly, while sperm are swimming upward, these cilia are moving downward, creating resistance. This resistance may seem unhelpful, but it serves as another filtering stage, allowing only the strongest sperm to continue toward the egg. Inside the fallopian tube, sperm undergo a final preparation stage called capacitation. This term describes a series of changes that make the sperm capable of fertilizing an egg. Although sperm arrive in the female body already formed, they are not fully active when they leave the male reproductive system. During capacitation, their outer membranes become more flexible, and the way they swim becomes more powerful and direct. They also become more sensitive to chemical signals released by the egg and surrounding cells. These changes do not happen immediately. They take several hours. 
Sperm that undergo capacitation too early or too late cannot fertilize the egg, so timing is crucial. If ovulation has occurred, an egg will be sitting near the upper portion of the fallopian tube, surrounded by a cluster of protective cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must work together to break through these layers. Although only one sperm will ultimately fertilize the egg, many are needed to weaken the outer barriers. The sperm release enzymes, proteins that break down material, to help them push through these protective layers. Once a single sperm penetrates the outer shell of the egg, called the zona pellucida, an immediate change occurs. The egg releases chemicals that cause the zona pellucida to harden, preventing any other sperm from entering. This reaction protects the egg from being fertilized by more than one sperm, which would cause abnormal development. The moment the sperm enters the egg, the nuclei from both cells move toward each other. The nucleus is the part of the cell that carries genetic information. When the two nuclei merge, fertilization is complete. A new cell containing genetic material from both parents is formed. This cell, called a zygote, will begin dividing within hours, starting the earliest stages of embryonic development. Meanwhile, any remaining sperm quickly lose their ability to function and break down naturally within the female reproductive tract. In cases where fertilization does not occur, the sperm simply reach the fallopian tubes and eventually die within a day or two. They are harmlessly absorbed by the body, the egg, if unfertilized, also breaks down, and the menstrual cycle continues as usual. There are situations in which the journey of sperm can become disrupted. Thick or sticky cervical mucus may block sperm from entering the cervix, which can happen due to hormonal imbalances, dehydration, or certain medical conditions. Infections in the reproductive tract may create an environment that is too acidic or hostile for sperm survival. Low sperm count, poor sperm shape, or reduced sperm movement can also limit how many reach the egg. Stress, smoking, heat exposure, and some medications may reduce sperm quality. In the fallopian tubes, scarring from infections or medical conditions like endometriosis can create physical barriers that sperm cannot pass, preventing them from reaching the egg. Understanding these factors helps explain why conception can be easy for some and more challenging for others. Despite all these obstacles, the human reproductive system is designed with a remarkable balance of protection and opportunity. The loss of millions of sperm along the way is not a failure of the system. It is a built-in process that ensures only the healthiest and most capable sperm reach the egg. The journey after ejaculation is a combination of natural barriers, supportive environments, chemical communication, and biological timing. Each step plays an essential role in the possibility of creating new life. 